what Jesus said during Hanukkah. Here it is, John chapter 10. At that time, the Feast of the Dedication, Feast of the Dedication, what's that? Took place in Jerusalem, and it was, here it is, guys, winter. There was only one feast, okay? One feast in the winter, you guys, and this one is Hanukkah. Right, And we're going to look at a little bit of the history of that so you'll understand it as well in this episode. So stay tuned. You're going to see a lot more. And there's actually a picture of the Antichrist in that, in this evil guy that this is what the story of Hanukkah is all based on. So watch this. This is really cool. You're going to love it. You're going to learn so much. Here we go. So this, this feast took place in winter. There's only one feast, and that is Hanukkah, you guys. And look at this. I love this. This is an actual photo of a snowflake, right? Did you know snowflakes have these beautiful designs? I've captured one on my jacket before. It is amazing. I've actually caught one right on my sleeve and I looked at it and it looked like the Star of David. It's amazing. Maybe perhaps that's where we got the Star of David besides the pomegranate blossom. That's another place. But look at this. It's like the Star of David. Isn't that beautiful? God designed each one of those. So amazing. So Hanukkah. So this backstory on Hanukkah is right around 167, 160 to 167 BC. That means before Christ, not before common era, but before Christ. I know a lot of professors are trying to wipe that off of the, you know, off of the books right now. But this guy right here, this evil man named Antiochus Epiphanes IV, he was a tyrant. He was just as bad or worse than Hitler, and he was a picture and a type of the future Antichrist, just like we see Joseph being a type and a picture and a foretelling of Jesus Christ, and Moses also being a type and a foreshadowing of Jesus. This guy was a foreshadowing of the son of perdition, the Antichrist, which Paul talked about coming in the future, which Jesus talked about coming in the future. He said this abomination of desolation that's coming right? Jesus said that. And it was not 70 AD. That might have been another little snapshot of what's coming, but it wasn't the the Antichrist. It wasn't Titus or what happened in the temple at that time. But this guy it was, 167 BC before Christ. So he was embarrassed by the Romans and he went north up to Jerusalem and he slaughtered 80, over 80,000, some estimates are Jewish people, 80,000 of them slaughtered him. This horrible man. Here's a coin with his image on it. And here you can see it says Epiphanes, Epiphanes in the Greek. This Epiphanes means God manifest. So he set himself up later in the temple itself. This is how evil this guy was. He set himself up in the temple to be worshiped, this guy. Horrible, horrible man. And he even put a statue, they say in history and in, in the legend, that he put a statue of Zeus up, which is interesting because we know the Church of Pergamos was where this place, this evil place that even the Nazis loved in archaeology not too long ago. And they even set up Hitler's podium right where the statue of Zeus would have been in this mock up in Nuremberg of, of Pergamos. And Jesus said to the church of Pergamos, this is where the seat of Satan is. So it's always satanic. Zeus is always associated with satanic things. And this evil guy right here, this Antiochus Epiphanes, he set a statue up, according to history, of Zeus in the temple and even slaughtered a pig on the altar. So he defiled it. It was a it was a fulfillment, a partial fulfillment of Daniel, where Daniel talked about him, but it's also a future fulfillment and a prophecy of this Antichrist, which is to come. So happy Hanukkah. And not to give you guys any bad news, but happy Hanukkah to you, Jewish people. I love the Jewish people. I just wanted to tell you that I love you. If you're in Israel and if you're or if you're Jewish or both, I love you guys. My Messiah is Jewish. My King is is Jewish. He whom I worship is Jewish, and he's my Messiah, and I hope he'll become yours too if he isn't already. So so anyway, I wanted to give you guys that. Happy Hanukkah. I love the story of Hanukkah. I love the story of the Maccabees, the, the revolt, how they, they defeated this evil antichrist type, and I wanted to tell you guys, we, my family and I, we love you, Israel. 
We love you. And real Christians who, who truly love God and love Jesus, they love Israel too. Those And some are deceived and they don't know any better and they're, they're lost right now. But I hope they decide and understand that they need to love Israel as well. Because you are still the apple of God's eye. That does not change. God's promises never change. Okay? So, hey, we love you, Israel. Wanted to say that to you guys. So here in John chapter 10, Jesus and Jesus was walking into the temple area. We looked at that, right? And this was what? The winter feast this is during Hanukkah. This is when he went there to the temple area in the portico of Solomon, right? The portico of Solomon. The porch of Solomon is what that means. What is that? We're going to look at that right now. Watch this. You guys are going to be amazed. So here's Solomon's temple. This was the most glorious temple, the biggest one. There was like silver paving stones It was because it was so rich. Uh, there was like seven, I think, menorahs inside of the holy place. This was just a magnificent temple that Solomon built. This is an actual medallion that they found near the temple mount. Uh, dating back from Solomon's era. And here you see the seven golden lampstand, the menorah. Here's the Torah. This might be the shofar right there. And see how perfectly preserved that is. Gold never corrodes, by the way. It doesn't uh, burn up like everything else in this universe. So here I want to show you something here that we're going to look at. Here is a picture that I drew showing where I believe that Solomon's porch or portugal was this is where herod's temple was this is the beautiful gate this did not line up with the original east gate today's golden gate lines up with i believe where the original east gate was which means it would line up where the original solomon's temple was we're going to look more into that right now watch this you guys so here's a picture of, I'm going to do the full presenter so you can see it a little bit better. Here's a picture from my Bible of what Jerusalem looked like during David and Solomon's time. So this was the lower area of Jerusalem where David started. And then later Solomon got this, he, he developed this area and had the temple built up here to the north. Here's the altar. You can barely see it. There's the altar. There's the temple. Here's the east gate, right? And here's the Kidron Valley. Um, you would see the Mount of Olives right over in this area. This is where uh, David's area was, and then later, and, and this is where Solomon's uh, royal palace was. This could be where Herod's temple became on top of where Solomon's royal palace was, which is where we see the Dome of the Rock today. But up here to the north, I believe this is where Solomon's temple was, just like this map is showing us. Really interesting stuff. So here's an outline of what we just looked at, right? Mount of Olives, Kidron Creek, which runs dry part of the year. Here's the Solomon's area. This is all like Jerusalem, Temple Mount area. This is where the lower kingdom where David was there, um, the lower city, excuse me. So here we're looking at another map. So this is the same area during Jesus's time, right? And here you see the Golden Gate, or it's actually called the East Gate probably back then. Here's the beautiful gate. See how it's south of the Golden Gate where the East Gate would have been? And here you're seeing where Herod's temple was. This is what it looked like, Jerusalem looked like, during Jesus' time. So here's an outline of the old one over the one during Jesus' time. So here's Solomon's temple area, Temple Mount. Here's the whole Jerusalem here. And look how it lines up. The original East Gate lines up north of where Herod's temple was. See, here's the Golden Gate right here, right? This is this is uh, Herod's during Jesus' time, right? This is what Jerusalem looked like. And here's that outline, this overlay of Solomon's temple. And see where the Golden Gate is? Look how that lines up, you guys. Look at that right through here. Here's the Mount of Olives. Now let's keep moving. You're going you're gonna to be blown away by this. Here's a close-up of it right here. Now you can see the Golden Gate, right? The Temple Mount. So here's Herod's Temple. Here's the beautiful gate, which is inside of the wall. So Jesus could have been teaching right in this area, which would have been called Solomon's Porch or Solomon's Portico. This area right here. 
Let's keep going. Watch this. Here today is what you see in Jerusalem. These walls were built by the Ottoman Turks, the Muslims, by Solomon the not-so-magnificent. I think he was an evil man. And he had this sealed up because a rabbi told him that the Messiah was going to enter by this east gate. So he had it sealed up, and it became known as the Golden Gate. Now, many believe that when Jesus returns, the true Messiah, Jesus returns, this is going to open up for him. He's going to walk through. Here's a picture of how it lines up if you were looking from the Mount of Olives. Okay, so this is the Golden Gate. And right through here, you see this Muslim shrine here, which below it is this area they call, the. this is called the Dome of the Spirits or the Dome of the Tablets. Now, which tablets? What would, what would the tablets be? The tablets that Moses had... And where were those located? Those were located inside of what? The Ark of the Covenant, right? The original Ten Commandments. Those were in the Ark. And where was the Ark? The Ark was always inside of the Holy of Holies, the holiest place of God, right? That's where we see the Ark of the Covenant. And this could have been where Solomon's temple was, you guys. This is amazing, you guys. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So, Here, we're going to look at that picture right now. So this is where I believe Solomon's temple was, right over this dome of the tablets. And below that, they believe that this is the original bedrock, right? There's flat bedrock up here with no chisel marks that this could have been the resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. Because when David bought that, remember, that was the threshing floor. And it's like a natural threshing floor to thresh wheat, And this could have been the actual place. Here's the Golden Gate. See how it lines right up through here, you guys. Amazing stuff. So let's continue on. Let's keep moving. This is so fun. So here's the bedrock. This is what that dome of the tablets looks like. It's a flat spot which could easily fit the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, right? Amazing. So here we are. Uh, Here's an uh, overhead view of what this could have looked like. So here's where Herod's temple was, I believe. There's the beautiful gate, right? And the dome of the rock today would sit right above that. And this could have been where Solomon's palace was. But to the north was Solomon's temple. And this is where that, you know, where you could see that dome of the tablets. It's right up here, you guys. So isn't that amazing? And it would line right up with the Mount of Olives, then that Golden Gate or the true East Gate, which they found a couple of pillars below that, which they believe was the original. And this would be Solomon's porch where Jesus was teaching that we just looked at. And it would go right through here all the way to Golgotha. Watch this. You're going to see how that pans out to you here in a minute. Here's another picture, one that I drew up of it. I believe this is how it was. And here's another one. So this is like a further out view. There's a Mount of Olives. Here's the Golden Gate, or you could say the East Gate, the original one. And this is during Jesus' time, what it would have looked like. Okay, and here's uh, Herod's temple. There's the beautiful gate inside. I believe Jesus was teaching up in this area, which would have been Solomon's porch. Now, if you drew a straight line through here, there's an amazing thing that happens. This is where Jesus was crucified. Isn't that amazing? So Jesus is returning on the Mount of Olives. The Mount's supposed to split from north to south, and there'll be a line, a new river runs from the east gate and flows down and and heals the the Dead Sea, and then it flows the other way too. But it's interesting that it all lines up with Golgotha, which is the place where Jesus was crucified. Here's another picture of that. See the original pillars they found from what they believe was Solomon's East Gate. There's the Dome of the Tablets and Golgotha. If you're looking from the Mount of Olives, right? That amazing. Now let's go into Ezekiel real quick, you guys. So Ezekiel chapter uh, 48. We see that he he walks outside of the the walls of Jerusalem. He goes from the northeast gate, which would be that Levi gate, walks around, which is right because Ezekiel was a priest, right? And then he walks around to that east gate, which is that northeast gate. And he looks at it over and over and he sees amazing things in that. Because what? That would be the the same gate that we see if we overlaid that on the Temple Mount from history that we just, you know, the stuff that we just looked at. Now watch this. This This is going to blow you away. Watch this. So here's what Ezekiel sees, and here's how he walks out from this new temple in this area right here. He walks out of that gate. He comes over, and he focuses on this east gate. Now, later, 
In cha- here, I'm sorry, in chapter 48, he talks about the names. He said on the north side, there's Reuben, Judah, and Levi. And then on the east side, Joseph, Benjamin, and Dan. South, Simeon, Issachar, Zebulun. You know, it just continues on like this. Joseph's name is on that east gate. This is the new temple during the millennial reign of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ. And we see Joseph's name on that. Isn't that amazing, you guys? I'm blown away by this, aren't you? Now let's watch this. Let's let's check it out. Let's go back over here and let's let's look at it again. So Ezekiel sees this. He also sees water flowing out of the side. Now what happened? Jesus, when he was crucified, he was pierced on his side and water mixed with blood came out, right? And spilt on the ground there. Precious blood, his blood, which is very precious. And Ezekiel's looking at this east gate and he sees this new river flowing from the south side of the altar. Let's look at that picture once more, you guys. The south side of the altar and then the south side of that east gate, which has whose name on it? Joseph's name. It was a huge picture and a type of Jesus Christ. God's showing us a pattern right here. This is amazing. So let's continue on. So they asked Jesus in John chapter 10, how long will you keep us in suspense? They said to Jesus, if you are the Christ, which means Messiah, if you're the Mashiach, tell us plainly, they said to him. Jesus answered them, this is what he said. I told you and you do not believe the works that I do in my father's name. You did not believe the works I do in my father's name, he said. These testify of me, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. Now he's speaking to these guys, not his 12 disciples. They were of his sheep. They were Jewish and they were believers in him. They followed him, right? 12 of them. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand, Jesus said. No one. No one can take them out of his hand. You can't take me out of Jesus' hand. No one can. And I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So Zechariah 12 says this, you guys, check this out. Zechariah 12 says, And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Let's go to the full presentation so you could see this clearly. And then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as him as one grieves for a firstborn. Speaking about how the Jewish people will discover Jesus was their Messiah. So here's that picture again. See the pattern, you guys? Here it is. Joseph's gate right here through to Golgotha. Amazing stuff. Ezekiel chapter 43, verses 10 through 11 says this. Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the what? The pattern. That's what prophecy is about, you guys. It's a pattern. And if they are ashamed of all they have done, make them make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement. And here it is, guys. It's exits and its entrances. Whoa! So we can see that it all points to the foot of the cross. Make known to them the exits, the pattern, and the exits and its entrances. Whose name was on that east gate in Ezekiel? Joseph! Joseph, who had a testimony of God himself. Psalm 83. God sent Joseph as a testimony of who? Himself. To show whom he was who his son is. Like Proverbs 30, who's his son if you know his name? His name is Yahweh. He's God, you guys. This is amazing, you guys. So let's keep going in this. The pattern. So Ezekiel ends with this in verse uh, 35 of chapter 48. The name of that city from that day forward shall be the Lord is there. Jesus will be there, you guys. He is going to be in that new Jerusalem 
during the millennial reign of Christ. He's going to dwell there and rule and reign for a thousand years. The Bible tells you that. In Revelation, it says it six times in seven verses that he will rule and reign with us who believe in him for a thousand years from where? Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, you guys. Amazing stuff. So good. That's the pattern, you guys. And if you're in Israel, you could see the pattern clearly. It's right there. So, hey, don't forget, hit this playlist right here, How to See Jesus, How to Find Jesus in all the Old Testament, and you'll be blessed by this playlist right here. So click on this, my friend.